Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. And I can choose what oh, yeah. I want to say. Hey, oh. we're back. Mm-hmm. It is Tuesdays with Stories, the greatest podcast in the history of mankind or womankind. Person kind. They or kind. they kind. There you go. They are kind. By the way, I don't want to just jump into a controversial topic here. Be kind, rewind. Yeah, well, uh, be... Be... Tard, <laughs> retard. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Is there something that rhymes with tard? Card? Rard? Hard. Be hard. 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 Oh, be hard. Be retard. Hard. I'm hard. Be card, retard. Hey. That's pretty good. I like it. T shirt. Get on it. <laughs> be, be, be hard and retard. That's not a great shirt, I don't think. <laughs> no, that one didn't. <laughs> not looking back. Don't make the shirts. Well, you know, I want to just do the, the the Jimmy Leg Shake right off the bat here. We're just opening with some some hot topic. Great oh, store. Oh yes, yeah. I preferred Spencer's. Uh, oh yeah, I love Spencer's. Spencer's gifts. Yeah, a lot. Of, you can walk through there and have a ball, then leave. Rubber dick, ball gags, t-shirts. Yeah, I'm as I'm as think as you drunk I am. Uh, I listen. I do what the voices in my head tell me to do. I mean, it was a hoot and a holler. Spencer's ruled, um, but. Bart. What uh, you, cushion? Know, you know me, I go to Equinox. Oh, the steam. Big steam. Well, yesterday I walk in and there's one just north of Union Square. It's on like 16th and Broadway, I uh-huh. think. Something like that. Sure. And I think it's like the gayest one. Really? More than the village. The well, village I've been to the village. The w- Mecca. Yeah, that's true. And Chelsea. True. So maybe not. Bill. this is in between the village and Chelsea. Uh-huh. So it's kind of, I guess technically that's Chelsea, 16th and Broadway. Yeah, so you take the tits and the butthole and you're right in the, the dick. Well, speaking of tits and butthole, and that, you know, I'm not saying nothing about anything. I'm not looking to cause any controversy here, but sure. I walk into the men's locker room and there is. I guess a man presenting as a woman. Okay. I don't know how it works, but there was a, a person. Uh huh. Long ponytail, big scrunchy, mm. half shirt, like a halfsy light blue shirt. Uh huh. Mid drift. Tits. tits Mid drift with some side tattoos. Okay. Jean booty shorts. Must have been post workout. So far, so good. Shaved legs. Okay. I'm and, into it. And makeup. Great. What's the problem? In the men's locker room. Ah, the men. So I did a full jolt, like a like a real zap of like I walked in the long wrong locker room. Yeah, yeah. Wah! And then, <laughs> but I was jail. like, I think I know where I am. I come here frequently. Sure, sure. And then I looked and I saw the dudes and the towels with the pecs and the chest hair. Mm. And so, I guess this must be. They must have a, a penis, so maybe it's like one of these athletes. We don't want these athletes in our sports type of thing, so they have to use the men's locker room, or maybe yeah. they identify as man but present as a woman. I think I'm using all the right terms. I think so. But uh, from our terms, Very there's a terms. chick in the <laughs> men's locker room. Yeah. Well, perspective, you know. Wow. You look over, and I just see, like it, looked like, it looked like my sister or my aunt or someone else I'm attracted to. Uh, sure, sure. Wow. So, uh, dick out? No dick? No dick. Well, this is the thing that was fascinating, and I was bummed, because I think I must have just missed the changing process. Oh. Or the showering process, because... They were on their way out. Mm. They were dressed, like I said, jean shorts, t-shirt, yeah. half shirt. So I was like, if I had got here 10 minutes earlier, would I have walked in and seen a pair of tits? Because that would be pretty cool. Pretty cool. I mean, fake or not fake, tits or tits. Yeah, you got that straight. So, or gay. But I got some questions. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so was it uh, Big Shoulder, Adam's Apple? Like, how far in are we talking with the transition? Well, I didn't stare, you know? You try to be yeah. polite, but I, I got two glimpses, and it just looked like a petite woman. Oh, okay. 
Just yeah. small frame. Small frame, probably, yeah. Looks like, I don't know. It wasn't, there wasn't like bulging, the only thing bulging was the tits. Sure, and my dick. Um, but Dan Bulger. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Bulge. But I think there's, there's identify and there's present. Got it, got you it. present as a woman, but identify as a man, I think. Comedy Central presents. Or I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm confused because it, it, it moves and changes. Yes. And I was born in 1982, so I feel a little whacked out. Exactly. And then if you don't keep up with the times, then you're a Nazi or whatnot. And you, 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 the terms are so scary to say because you don't want to say the wrong thing. I, I'm a termophobe. Um, <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's not bad. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I walked in and I, for a moment, like I said, I really thought, I was like, I'm a piece of sh- I just committed a crime. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, I think, so I don't know. Well, I guess. That's what the internet and social media, it, it puts that fear in you. You're like, am I getting in trouble because I'm in the wrong room? Is she going to film me? Is that it for me? Am I done? Yeah, it it's was. a real fear. It was kooky, but maybe, maybe. They have a, a, a cock yeah. still, and they went over into the ladies' locker room God. and said, hey, I got, a, I got a ponytail and a scrunchie and a pair of tits, so I'm in here. Yeah. And then they saw the Captain Winky and went, <laughs> hey, you got to stay over there. Yeah, but... That's all I can think. I agree, but then there's also all these other stories you hear about, oh, uh, well, the, the guy or the lady was in the, the women's locker room because they identify as a lady, but have a dick out. And that's okay because they identify. It's all it's it's a lot of wackiness, and I feel like it's it's all kind of uh, contradicting because mm. there's not a, there's not hard and fast rules everywhere. There's no exactly this is how we handle this, and everybody's so scared of getting in trouble with with the with the words and the whatnot and the pronouns. Well, I think the fluidity is what makes it tricky. Fluidity, exactly. Yes. Well, Fun well word. said. Fun word to say. So that's the thing. If somebody's fluid you can't have hard rules yes exactly because i think they can flow from one to the other right and that includes locker room so they got you either way you go hey you're in trouble with this they go oh what about the fluidity and then you go what about that and they go well i'm fluid over here as well so it's like this ribbon uh, uh, that uh, you know those those gymnasts to do the ribbon oh yeah i you, like you, those like yeah. will ferrell yes like will ferrell old school they're very flowy and fun but you can't you can't grab it. Right. It's like trying to grab fog. Put the ribbon on. Um, <laughs> but anyways, it was quite a sight. No no judgment here. I, sure. Hey, and by the way, if... Uh, oh, oh, what was that? Sorry. All right. Uh, even if... You know me. I'm a free-flowing... Uh, I, I, I love it all. Oh, you yeah. You can bring uh, any lady into the men's locker room. I'm happy to have them. I love your free will and attitude. So, yeah. So, I'm cool with it. Get get, get funky. And, sure. Um, I don't care. No, no, no. So, I'm for it. Peace in the Middle East. And, uh, yeah, bring those titties into my locker room. Yeah. And I don't care. Man tits, lady tits, whatever. But I do think the, the gals on the other side of the, the hall there in the ladies' room... They don't dig it. Right. Well, that's why, I, that's why I think this person, because I think, you know, I think men, men's locker room, we're like, okay, here's a woman with a penis over here. No, no, no biggie. No big deal. But I think the, the reason is the women, they're a little more vulnerable to yes. assault and abuse. So they're yes. like, take your penis elsewhere. Yes. But I'm happy with a dick or a tit right yeah. in front of my face. And I don't just mean the locker room. I mean right here in the studio. Hey, bring it on. Chuck, show us your pussy. All right. But Grandma the pussy. Anyway, so that happened yesterday. Fascinating. Yeah, wow. it was something. I'm going to go back. I'm, I'm, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. If Make I can friends. see tits without buy, paying a cover charge or begging my wife, I'll take them. Of course, and uh, I'd like to get her uh, on the pod. <laughs> um, well, Let's get her in here. We'll steam it up. All right, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll dabble. Maybe I'll say, hey, you ever do podcasts yeah. there? Well, well, we can even bring the equipment in there. Do it like an 11-minute one before the shit shorts out. I like that. And uh, by the way, great band, them. Not great band, but you know, it's Van Morrison. He started so, over there. Wait, he's in that? Yeah, that was his band. G L O R. That was them. I didn't know them. Yeah. How about they? They, them. Interesting. All right, well. Keep... Oh, I'm getting texts from Salacuse. That always makes me nervous. Uh, What's that about? He probably wants to shoot your, your new special with my, this trans person. My load. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. Let's get well, going. You came out in the, with a banger. I'm I'm all uh, foggy. I know it's not a typical opening. Usually we get silly and wacky. I but like these it. days we're walking on barbed wire over here with this story. Oh yeah, you came out the gate with a 
Big Tit Steam. Did you see that movie, Barb Wire, with Pamela Anderson? I jerked off to it, and then I turned it off. I never saw it. Was her name Barb Wire? Yes. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> I think that was the whole conceit. they like, Barb Wire. Print it! And yeah. they didn't, then they wrote a movie around that name. That's not bad. I never got into Pam Anderson. I know this was sounds good. Yasmeen Bleeth, is that somebody? Sure. I think she was hotter. I, the giant tits, blonde hair, big face. I just didn't do it for me. You know when she was the hottest was she got discovered at a, at a football game in Canada mm. in Labatt Blue. And uh-huh. she was a cute girl next door, kind of a skanky, fun lady. And that was the hottest. And then she got all whacked out with the tits and the blonde and the fake tan and the whole thing. Yeah, Home Alone. Not Home Alone. Home Improvement. Yeah, that was the she hottest was version. She there, yeah. Uh, tool Time. But I always liked a smaller tit. I liked more like a, like a, like a man kind of yeah, look. Yeah, some muscles, maybe a dick. Yeah, something like that. I hear you. I knew a guy who was, uh, he, was he, didn't, he knew he was gay when he watched the... Uh, the female gymnast, because he was like, man, they're so ripped and flat. Oh, right. He's like, uh, maybe I'm into dudes. Interesting. That's what flipped him. All right, so anyways, where you been? What's going on? Ooh, well, oh, baby, I just got back from Louisiana. Wow. Sportsman's Paradise. Proud to call it home. The Crescent City. The Big Easy. NOLA. So, Louisiana. You know me, I got crazy guilt issues. So I said, Yee We can't just go to Jazz Fest and do drugs and eat crawfish bread and uh, drink a beat of beer. I got to do a show first, make a couple bucks, and get my work in. Sure. That, and that's fair, by the way. Okay. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, particularly when you, you sell tickets the way you do, you go. it's like an ATM machine. Exactly. You go down, you do a show, and then you take that cash, and you spend it on some fun. Ass to mouth. It almost is silly not to do that. Thank you. Appreciate it. So I go, all right, we're going to Jazz Fest Friday and Saturday. We got the whole day free, the whole night free. Why don't we go down Thursday and pop over to old Laffy Taffy, Lafayette, Louisiana. Mm, JP. Yeah, J.P. Leonard has the best show in Louisiana, if you ask me. Uh, it's at the Lafayette Club 337 in the Doubletree Hotel. Yes, they give you that cookie, and uh, it's a nice gig. Great gig. You, you sleep above, you know, you sleep in the hotel. The show's in the ballroom or the conference room, whatever you want to call it. And it just fits. It's like a perfect semicircle right in there, and it's great for comedy. Yeah, it's a nice spot. I just did it. Loved it. And this guy's got, he's a comic, so he's got good taste. He has Kyle Kinane, he has Eddie Pepitone, he has Sean Patton, he has uh, he had Nate Bergazzi in like the 40s, he had Tom Segura in 81, I mean, he had everybody. Yeah, I think he, his first show was Segura. What? Which was hard to believe, because now Segura does baseball stadiums. Exactly. Holy shit. That's starting off big. But uh, either way, so I go, hey, set it up there, JP. He goes, I'm on it. We sold it, two shows. And uh, it's just fun. You get to hang out with them, and it's so low key. You know, we're sitting in a like the breakfast nook of a hotel where they do free breakfast, and we're just sitting in there. That's the green room. Yes. And he's got your tequila, your whiskey, your beers, and mushrooms and whatnot. And it's just a great hang. And then I, I book a local guy, Isaac Cozell from New Orleans. So he drives up. He hosts features or whatever he features, and then he's gonna drive me back on Friday morning. Perfect. It's all locked in. Now, we got some sold-out shows here. I'm from Louisiana. Let's get kooky. First show, 7 o'clock, Thursday night. Pretty good. Nice crowd. Filled up. Here we go. Then the second show rolls around, and you can just see them in the lobby. Yeah. You know when you can see it a mile away, they're stumbling, and then you you try to run to the, the bathroom, and they're like, there he is, Norman, ah! So now I'm hiding in the stall, and they're all going, hey, you bitch, what are you shitting in there? You pissing? Ah, and they're looking under, you know, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be a long night. Well, that's one of the things about that gig is there's no privacy. You're really out there. No barrier. You're out there, Jerry, and oh, you're not yeah. loving every minute of it. No, you're out there like a she, them, and a steam room men's room. Yeah, it's a little, it's tough sledding there. Because even the road, like, you run like the Beatles. And yes. it's not like um, I'm some famous asshole, but no, I've known no. enough that some guy would be like, 
Well, I'll be damned. Look at you. You're over yeah. there wearing your shirt. And I'm yeah, like, this, ah. That was my uncle. <laughs> exactly. And and also, the first show, it's funny to see how people change with, with booze. Because Ooh. the first show, they're like, oh, there he is. There's, there's the guy we're coming to see. And the girl's like, who is he? What? what? He looks gay. I'm like, no, he's not gay. No. And then, then you run up to the room and you do whatever you got to do. And then the second show, it's like, look at this homo. Ah! You bitch! I fucked your sister. You're like I don't even have a sister, so it's a whole other world. And right out of the gate, you got the two people talking up front, and I had to do like the could you, could you just cool it? And they go, oh, oh, we got to cool it, blah. And then so one guy goes, fuck this, I'm getting a beer. So he gets up, falls right on his face. Nice. Just, so that was fun. I got the riff on that for a minute. And then you're like, let's try to get it together here. You feel like a teacher in a in a retarded uh, special needs class. You know? Get hard, retard. Yes, t-shirt. So uh, finally, just getting heckled, getting heckled, and uh, then I do the Q and A, and I might as well have opened a, a, an auction on Grinder for uh, Jared Leto. Yeah, the deep, the deep south, uh, no place to open up the door to uh, communication. No offense <laughs> no, to my, no, my southerners down there. But um, I, I told you, I did um, Huntsville, and then just out of curiosity, I was like, is this more Auburn or Alabama country? Oh, and the pl- it just turned into a civil war. I had to quit comedy for three years. Yeah, exactly. Don't, don't get them started on freeing the slaves. They started screaming. They played a game of Red Rover. It was wild. It was like Braveheart. Yeah, come and on over. Louisiana, I had both times I did Lafayette. <laughs> I had once was the, the, the New Orleans Saints incident of yeah, 2020. Oh, that was big. Where I just said, hey, Forrest Gump, they made a sequel and he played for the Saints. And this guy was like, fuck your mother. You don't talk about the Saints. And I was wow. like, well, I'm just saying it's a book. That was my aunt. It was I mean, it was insane. Pretty I was good accent. I was scared going back. Yeah, I think maybe I could do Southern. I think you can. All right. I do declare. I do Southern. I do declare there were times when I was so lonesome. I took some comfort there. Hey, that's good. Boy, you could you could uh, do a rape case in a in a really warm courtroom. By the way, that was uh, Paul Simon I just did. Oh. I did Paul Simon as a southern bell. What's a bell? Can you Bell's be a male a bell? Oh. Bell's a lady. Okay. Ring that bell. What about know? a bell boy? Mm, or a bell hop. <laughs> good point. Or a bellman. Bellman. But so you got to add the man to make it sure it's not a locker room lady. Right. So if it's Bell on its own, that's a la- the Bell of the Ball. There you go. So what is the Bell Southern of the Ball? Bell. Is that an award? The Bell of the Ball? Do you win Best mm, Bell? I bet that's got some origins. Because I think if you had a ball or two balls, you'd have a bunch of bells. <laughs> it would be in a steam room. The Bell of the Ball is the best bell. It I think it's like. the hot lady. It's, the, it's Miss America. Oh, she's the bell. She's the bell. It's, she won. It's the prettiest girl at the ball. Does that we need an origin though? Right. We're just saying what we're saying. I know, but I'm just saying like that's what it means, like in general. But, but I, I wonder I don't if, they, if there is an origin. Let's I see. bet they gave you a bell. There's back no in origin. The day. <laughs> it's gotta be an origin. That. That's a origin. Um, okay. But yeah, the bell, the ball, and then there's uh, you're you're thinking of like uh, well, there's also this debutante, which oh, yeah, called debutante. women. And then well, what what is that old guy? That southern. Gentile. Oh, Gentile. I don't know Gentile. Gentile is a seersucker suit. You're a little dainty almost. You got like a foghorn, not a fog, what's the, this KFC guy? Mm, and Colonel he Sanders. Plays with it? Yes. A, a, a tweed. Tweed, little bolo tie, and a weird gay haircut. And you're like, mm, you got your mint julep, and you're going, mm, I do declare that black boy is looking pretty mighty healthy. Like John Candy and JFK. Yeah, you the go. The government's going to do cock a doodle doo all over yes. your suit or whatever. The kingfish, Huey Long. Huey Long? Who's no. that? Howie Long. Yeah, Huey Long He's was, from a, Boston, I think he was a governor of Louisiana. For oh, yeah, that minutes. sounds familiar. He assassinated or attempted. Howie Long's from Charlestown, uh-huh. and he played for the Raiders. Huh? No real origin. Oh. It just means that. It was first used in 1822 in a magazine, but it just means the most beautiful person. Oh. Well, she is, she is, the bell of the ball. But anyway, so they're drunk maniacs. They're there. drunk maniacs, but then here's the worst part. Now, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I sell the merch after. So now when you're dealing with the, you're like a lion tamer. You got the, the whip, the chair, mm-hmm. you're just trying to hold them back. But now you're going to go sell merch and they're just up in your grill. Yes. Yeah, sometimes if the show's too wild, I'll just bail on I merch and fly home with 350 t-shirts. <laughs> do the same thing and it's a nightmare. You lose money and you got to ship it. But 
So now I'm getting this thing where I got a guy next to the merch table, and he's cracking wise. He's just leaning on the table with a cocktail, <laughs> cracking wise on every sale I make. So a guy will be like, can I get one large queef? He's like, one large queef? What are you, my, my nana? And I'm like, yeah, 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 all right. Yeah, take it easy, Bobby. Okay, so here, here, let me get the credit card. He's like, credit card? You going to chop up some Coke? All right, we're not <laughs> chopping up Coke. And it just didn't stop. And then later I had the, the lady was with me, and the two openers are like, Man, would you go to high school with that guy? I'm like, I've never met that guy in my life. He smelled it, like oysters. You need security. You need the big southern ball to be like, uh-huh. all right, move it on there, sonny yes. boy. I need a bell tower or something. Yes. Southern bell. Save the clock tower. Yes. Or the cock tower. But then I got a lady taking photos, and she's like, all right, get in, get in. And then she's cracking wise every photo. And I'm like, okay. And then they go, well... Well, what is she, uh, Jason's wife or something? I go, I don't know who that is. So these people just kind of just mill. Yeah, there's a lot of mill, rumor mill. Yes. Uh, it's no good sawmill parkway. <laughs> it's a lot, and you're just so vulnerable. And usually most people, the vast majority, they come in, they yes. say hello, they say Tuesday, they give you a high five, they give you the money, they keep moving. Some of them give you extra cash, by Oh, the way. yeah. One guy just handed me 50 bucks. He didn't even want a shirt. Uh-huh. He's like, there's 50, enjoy it. And I said, boy, thanks, and I got a prostitute sure. in 1971. That is nice. But, but yeah, some of them, they, they camp out. Then there's the people that purposefully linger to be last. Yeah. Because they know they have the window. Oh, I hate that guy. And they're like hiding behind a fence, and all of a sudden they're like, "Whoa, hey, one more t- yeah, sale!" Yeah. And then they just want to linger around. And then you always need an excuse. You're like, "I got some hot pie in the yeah. oven." <laughs> yeah, it's cooling on a windowsill. Also, I think what it is is they're very nice down south. It's a southern hospital. Everybody's gentle and nice and friendly. So they get hammered, and they, it all comes out. It's like the uh, the Japanese with porn. Mm. They're very they're very honorable. Hello, ho ho, Wah! and it's like a, a wax paper. You take your shoes off and the samurai and all that shit. And then the porn is just like, put a lampshade on my ass, fuck me with a parking cone, and uh, you know, squirt fudge in my face. <laughs> you know I gotta I mean? get some Japanese porn. Oh, it's wild. I could direct it. There's one where it's a lady giving the news. She's at a desk with a pantsuit on. Shuffling papers, going today, and there's a guy standing on the on the desk jerking off, and he jizzes on her, and she keeps reading it. Oh, it's I pretty don't like cool. This one bit, I made it my I bookmarked it. By the way, any uh, bookmark, Norman? Any any reference you make to porn, Chuck's always just nodding. I think Chuck's <laughs> seen hundred percent of the porn. <laughs> He's just like this. Porn. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Up uh, German snuff film, seen it. Sure. Yeah. Dead body, seen it. Coming on a lady's head while she's reading. That is that is a very specific. Well, the beauty Pacific is she keeps reading. She doesn't flinch. She doesn't go like. She right. just keeps going, and that's what's kind of hot about it. She's just taking it. That's interesting, because I don't want to go down a rabbit hole, but Carl Malden, you know that actor? Yeah, you know, know the, Malden. The, the big nose and on the waterfront, oh, yeah. streets of San Francisco, all that stuff. He said the hardest piece of acting he ever did ever was in the movie On the Waterfront. He's the priest, and he's talking to the longshoreman, and mm. someone throws, I think, a beer can at him. And he's like, the hardest thing I've ever done in acting, my 40-year career or 50 years, whatever, was to not pretend I didn't know a beer can was about to hit me. Uh, so he's got to sit there giving this speech, knowing at any moment a beer can's going to whip off his head. Yeah. Because I've tried, I've done acting stuff, some of it. Interesting. 11% Rotten Tomatoes. And <laughs> as the, if you're going to get hit or something's coming, it's hard not to be reacting already. Yeah. Like if I'm going to slap you in a scene, it's easy to flinch as it's coming. Wow, that is tough. So Carl Malden's doing it with a beer can. This woman, is she's better than Carl Malden. Yeah, she's, she's doing it with for a load. load. Exactly. And you gotta wonder how many takes they did. She's Kurt Loader. Was she like, okay, in the news today, you know, two samurais cut off a guy's head. And, yeah, exactly, oh, exactly. You know? Yes, yes, uh, I know. And, and somebody probably got in her eye and she has to just squint that one and I'm sure it's burning like hell while she's reading the weather. She got come in her samurai. Yeah. There you, it is. Who do you like better, Sam or I? Okay, <laughs> folks, we're really having a good time. Uh, what All what right. a good time this is. This is fun. Fun stuff. Words are fun. Uh, yeah, Sam or I. Yeah, 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 Captain. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> eye for an eye. Okay. Eyeballing me. <laughs> Eyeball chambers. Ah. Uh-huh. iPhone. Speaking of which. All right, so... We do the show, we have our good time, we sell some merch. Then you got that weird thing where Jason's like, 
here's all the merch you have left, giant pile of queef shirts. Yeah. And he goes, you want me to ship it or you want to just take it? And I was like, ah, what are you going to do? And I, I was thinking, ship it, ship it. But he's like, hey, might as well just take it. And I, I felt so bad he did so much work and helped us out so much. And I was like, all right. And I just went upstairs and threw it in the garbage. Yeah, this is what's hard with the merch. I, I said that this is my pitch, by the way. I'm, I'm so bad at pitching. I'm like, could you guys buy shirts? Because every week I leave a club being like, okay, take care, exactly. guys. Thanks for having me. It's a and carry on. Merch is tricky, too, because you're like, Matt Wayne, my, my, my dear friend, your friend, opener, he opens. And then he's like, I'll help you with the merch. And then people, I feel terrible because they just lose sight that... This is a human being and a comedian. Yes. So then they start walking. They see the previous person. They start walking up. They hand their phone, and they just don't take a photo. So now he's just the photo guy. Oh. But some clubs give you a photo guy. Always happens that way. And so then by the end of the weekend, I'm like, here's $9,000, Matt. I took a loss because yeah. I feel terrible that he's taking photos. Right, right. I know. I'm tipping everybody out. I tip the, the photo lady, and then Jason's like, do you know her? I'm like, I don't know her. He's like, I don't know her either. So. Oh, jeez. She might have just, just been a lady. She was just a lady who just volunteered. And I think it's fun. You feel like you're part of it. You know, hey, I'm helping. I'm yeah. important. But it, yeah. This, this might sound crazy. Could you like put it in the basement and try to just see if it's, you know, as opposed to throwing it away, just like stash it and next time you go, see if it's still there? I've done that before. That's what I would do at Comedy Connection. You know what I mean? Like it's like yeah. they have this crazy basement that's just like well, every comedy club. They have a huge basement. Mm -hmm. Not every club has a huge basement. Yeah, but I've yeah. done that before. I'm like, let me just slide this giant box into this closet. And then yeah. I get a call two weeks later like, did you leave a box of shit in the closet? And I'm like, ah, <laughs> shit. They're like, can you send us money? We'll ship it to you. I'm like, damn it, because I don't want it in my house either. Right. Yeah. You know, you, know, you have a finite amount of uh, square footage in a New York apartment, and one box will ruin your whole fun gay. Yeah. It's like that great gag in um, Inside Lewin Davis when, um, you know, what's his toes? Uh, Oscar Isaac, uh -huh. Lewin Davis, he yes. goes to hide his records under their table and it, there's like friction. He can't figure out what's there and he pulls it out and it's a different guy's box of records, uh, which is a great bit. Great bit. Yeah, that's because I, I had that with Rooftop. I did the CD and they send you like a gross ton of it. Yeah. And it's just, speaking of gross ton, my wife's been gaining weight. Hello, folks. Uh, but yeah, there's just boxes of CDs still in my house. Yeah, yeah. That's how they get you. Now, it's been so long that the technology isn't even relevant. Yes. So that's how long, that's how many CDs you got that you outlasted the technology. Yeah. As Jonigan used to say, I'm selling CDs, and at this point, I should be selling CD players with it. Ah. Uh -huh. What? Great True comment. story. Funny guy. Hope he comes back. Yeah, we miss him. Good egg. Good oh, the comment. writer's strike. Oh! He might be back. Well, there's been a, an influx of writers at the cellar. You're like, Matt Goldich. Hey, where you been? Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, hopefully the... Maybe the... Yeah, I hope the strike lasts a while so Jonigan will come back, but I hope it ends so those... Well, I like my gold. I, I like gold yeah. too, but I'm just yeah, I know saying. What you mean. It's funny that like we're the gutter. Like they're like, oh, this giant money making conglomerate <laughs> platform is gone. Let me just go back to this shit box with you, retards. By the way, I think I'm in the WGA because the movie. Hey. I should be out there. Okay. I was at home watching TV and, and and pulling my prick, and then all of a sudden I was like, hey, wait a second. I joined that union. So are you striking? I got a strike, baby. Hey, well, I the won't. iron's hot. I'm not going to write another movie until that strike is over. Three strikes, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, we can write uh, the Steam Room Chronicles or whatever. That's not bad. Okay. SRC. Yeah. All right. We'll put a one scene in there where they jizz on a news lady, just for, for Chuck. I like it. Okay. Well, I can get right into Jazz Fest, or we can, uh, you want to you wanna take take the helm a little bit? Well, let me tell you this real quick. Please. Um, so this happened last night. So I'm over at Grove 34. Ooh, I love the Grove. Grove 34, maybe the best room in town. It's about 150 yards from my house, and uh, Rob and Derek, these guys, first class. They're real men over there. Oh, you know? yeah, good eggs. Rob's in the Army. He's a pilot. Wow. I yeah. Didn't know that. Yeah, he just got back. I mean, he's, wow. like, still serving, and... Uh, that guy. When I heard the story about the subway, I was like, "Oh, I better check in on Rigo." Whoa, yeah, that subway story. My mom asked me about that. It's making his way around. <laughs> yeah, it's around, baby. Yeah, I don't know if you heard, but a, a marine choked out a, uh, I guess, a hobo. Yeah, and there's all kinds of racial thing and yada yada. Oh, they heard, baby. They heard me fucking Amber yelling, heard. thank Christ, out of my window. <laughs> um, well, he said, "I'm going to kill everybody on the train" or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, anyways. <laughs> 
Well, I don't, we already did the locker room stuff. We're going to get shut down if all we right, get into this right, business. Sorry. But uh, Keep it moving. But, uh, yeah, you know, what are you going to do? Um, kook, R.I.P. Kooks. By the way, everyone gives me shit about kooks, and then you're like, what do you think about this? Ah. Uh, this, this, I'm telling you, they're everywhere. There you go. It's happening. But any Jizz. So I did Cro- Grove 34 last night, and this was the hottest one I've ever done. I do it every 11 days or something. Packed out, and I uh, had a great group. Isabel Hagen, Greg Stone, Steve Rogers, and Sarah Talamash. Woo! Fun hang. Nice hang. It's all right. I just bring everybody. Everybody come over. We had uh, Lex shooting it. It'll be on YouTube. Maybe it's already on YouTube. We had some good laughs, good time, great hang. And the show is hot. And then I do about 40 minutes of new stuff. You know, is wow. this funny? Is this anything? Well, it's a lot of garbage. And then I go, hey, we sh- I should try to get some some clips. Let me yes. talk to the people here yes. and see if I can get a couple clips. Chasing those clips. That's what people do. Clip, clop, clip, clop. You, you got to get the clips. So I talk to this guy. He's from Ireland. I got nothing. I'm just naming cities in Ireland. Yeah. And I go, anybody else from a different country? And there's two guys over here. They go, oh, we're from Argentina. And I go, well, I, I, I dated a woman. She left me for Argentina. Fuck Argentina. You won the World Cup. Congrats. Hey, there you go. Argentina Turner. Yada, yada. I talked to them for about 11 minutes, getting some laughs, getting some hoots, some hollers. It's a good time the video mm-hmm. will come out and then i go yeah what do you guys uh, do they go we're going to the cellar they went to 10 shows the, com- the whole trip is just to watch comedy 10 shows in a row at the cellar they came here for a week just to go to the cellar and then they came to grove 34 oh my god what a nerd so i'm talking to them getting some laughs hooty hooty hotty hotty i go what do you guys do they're comedians. Oh, this is very un-American. So now I feel like an asshole. I just did a half hour of crowd work on two comics. Ah. Uh. Then I told this story. I never tell this story. Micah Sherman and I, I probably told this in the podcast at some point. Micah Sherman, our good buddy, past guest. The Sherm. He tried to get, he, he got tickets to go see Robin Williams. Robin Williams was doing one night only uh. at the... At the Comedy Connection years ago. Oh, yeah. And so Sherman, he's like, he loves him. He's an improv guy. He goes, I want to go. Come with me. And I was like, well, I work the club. I'm a comedian. Right. I don't want to go to a comedy club. And I'll stand in the back. And he's like, come on. He's like, put your ego away. Let's sit down. Mm. We'll we'll go watch. Just be a fan. Okay, okay. Fanny. And I was never a big fan of Williams' comedy. I love him as an actor. He seems like the best guy ever. Not a huge fan of the stand-up. Same. So I'm with you. I go, all right. You're right. Who am I? I can't sit in the crowd? Yeah. What am I, an asshole? Come on. I'll go sit in the crowd. You're a patron. So I go sit in the crowd. Uh-oh. Our seats, we're in row one, seats A and B. Oh, we're literally he right here, like feet on the stage like this, and you the can, whole show. You can feel his arm hair. I know every waiter and waitress and uh-huh. doorman. They're all taking the ticket going, what the hell are you doing here? I'm a regular. Ah, uh, the regs. So... Right away, Robin Williams comes up, and I don't want to out Robin Williams as a uh, He's gay. a bigot or whatever. Oh. He goes, hey, well, look at this guy. Look at these two fucking homos right here. Why don't you kiss, you fucking fags, you fucking bitches? <laughs> and the whole show, he kept calling back to it. Oh, man. He's like, two queers over here. Look at the homos. Everyone laugh at the homos. By the way, this is like 2007. That was hilarious. Yeah, that was big, big comedy then. Back then. So Still is in some yeah. circles. Not funny to say gay anymore. Two's guys. Hey. So, <laughs> so anyways, he's calling us gay. So now I feel like that to these guys. Right. I'm doing crowd work, but they said they all oh, they love it. That we it's great. I can't do voices. Yeah. Except for Southern. So then after the show, I, I finished the show. I say, thanks a lot. Best show I've ever done there. I, I could have shot a special there. The crowd wow. was so hot. Well, at least they saw a hot show. Hot show. So then I go back to the green room and uh, we're hanging out and I tell Derek, the co owner, I say, Hey, go grab the Argentinian guys and mm. let them come back here. There you go. Let them meet a real life wow, American comedian because you want to you want to get to know the comedians. This is worth the flight. They saw eleven shows of the cellar, but this is the money spot. Well, now they're gonna meet the old big man, yeah. old Misty. Yeehaw. Cream of the crop, baby. Oh yeah. Come say hello. I'm gonna bless them with my presence. Oh god. So they come back and I say, hey, this is Sarah and Greg Stone and Steve Rogers. Ask me anything you want. I'll, I'll help you out if I can. You know. Sure. And then uh, I go, oh, you guys. So you guys, what do you do? You make a living down there? And they go, yes, yes, we make a living. And oh, I'm like, god. oh, okay, that's nice. You make a living. And they go, yeah, we do three, four shows a week. I got my audience. Uh oh. Yada yada. And I go, great, great chat, great talk, very nice to meet him. You feel like you're bridging the clans, the countries. Yes. 
They leave, and I say, boy, what a hero I am, teaching these young comics a thing or two about comedy. Then I get a message. It was great to meet you. I say, great to meet you. I click on profile. Oh, God. 3.4 million followers. Whoa. The guy's huge. He's like a megastar. I'm an asshole. Wow. I'm at Grove 34, open mic, and it doing crowd work. I'm like, look at you two. What are you wearing, you fucking queers? Oh, this guy's man. massive. Oh. He flew in in a private jet. He's spending what? 10 days. Not a private jet. Oh. I made that up. Okay, I believed you. But I was thinking this. He's staying in the village for 10 days. These guys are massive. They're, They're huge. They're huge, Jerry. I'm an idiot. I thought they were open mic queefs. Wow. They're the top of the top of the food chain massive one had 700,000 followers the other one's got 9 million they're like the kings it's hilarious because you're like ah, let them come in here and kiss the ring and they're probably sitting out there going oh they're inviting us in to kiss our ring they yeah. probably thought you were going to blow them possibly but uh, hey it was a great time and of course I'm exaggerating a little but yeah these guys are huge stars down in Argentina can we get a name and we get a plug these guys need more followers clearly uh, what, what are we see. calling these Jews oh my god I got so many texts I shouldn't have looked at my phone don't look at the phone the texts are even well, it might be Argentina. Maybe they booked you a gig over there. One's name is Nicholas de Tracy. Nicholas de Tracy. He's got seven hundred and seventy-three thousand followers. Handsome guy. Nothing to sneeze at over there, Tracy. Yeah, that's something. And then the other one's name, both very nice and sweet. And um, I can't find him. I can't see Peter. Oh, here he is, uh, Lucas. Loriente. 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 Todo la que seria Lucas Loriente. He's got a Netflix, Entradas para Todos Mis Shows Abajo. Well, no offense he's a these, handsome guy, too. No offense to these uh, foreign comics, but there's about 11 comics in the rest of the world, and nine are in Australia, four are in Italy, and three are in, and 30 are in England. Oh, wow, that is a hunk. Sexy man. But in Argentina, I'm sure there's three, and I think he's one of them. Wow, these guys are these guys are huge, and so I can tell they're hilarious. You can tell they're like good comics, students of comedy. They're watching all the shows, and they know a few guys we know. And uh, okay, they couldn't have been cooler. And uh, obviously, I'm I'm joking a little, but it was wow. really nice to hang and chat with them. But you are embarrassed to do crowd work and find out someone's not just a comic, but a massive comic. And thank God I wasn't making fun of them. Yeah, I was just going, oh yeah, Argentina soccer, or whatever. Right, right. But wow, these guys because it's so different from America. We go to Argentina. The last thing we're doing. Is going to a comedy show. Right. You know, we're going to go, hey, let's go ride a bull or eat out a horse or whatever they do over there. But they come here and see 11 shows or whatever the fuck. That's bananas. Crazy. And uh, they were so kind. They're like, we're honored to meet you. It was an honor oh, to see you. We okay. came out to Queens just to see you because oh. we heard you were here. So it was quite a treat and a delight, a mutual um, uh, appreciation. There so you go. it was very fun. Whoa. But. Uh, I was thinking they had they were I'm like they make a living so I yeah. thought they would have 40 50,000 sure. followers something like that but these guys are huge but so they know you well done. they're aware of you and came out to Queens for your fat ass well for all I know they're doing all of our acts down there they've got oh. pens and papers at the cellar going uh, todos los fritos right right uh, how you say Jew <laughs> um, they're gonna do my whole act I'm kidding I don't think they're really stealing but great guys. Nice to see you, boys. And uh, if you're Spanish speaking, go check out these guys. Yeah, and welcome to America, baby. The comedy mecca, New York City. Yeah. So, so good to have you. They probably saw you a bunch, too, I'm yeah. sure. I hope. I hope. Say hello next time. I'll invite them in the green room and have them uh, blow me like you did. But uh, yeah, that was fun. And uh, yeah, I'm going to hear more about Jazz Fest. Wow, no, that's great. And that, I'm at Grove 34 next week. I can't wait. I love that that room. It's a great room. And uh, it's so nice. you got to hit me up. I, I'm right there. I'll hit you up. I'm doing it with Sean Murph. All right, well, I'll sit that one ah, out. Ah, the Murph dog. Murphy! He's no Steve Rogers, but oh, all right. Oh, oh, oh. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll hang out. Hi there, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Better Help. You got that right. We love butter. Butter, butter help? Mmm, margarine sucks. <laughs> I blew it. Better help. I get nervous. That's why I go to therapy. I recommend therapy to everybody, and the best way to get therapy these days is better help. All mm. our lives, we've been told to give, 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 to give our time, our energy, our resources. There comes a point when we need to take care of ourselves. Self-care is hugely important, especially in this day and age. Everyone I run into is a gosh darn kook. They're oh, yeah. losing it. Stress, anxiety, 
all that stuff, STDs. BetterHelp's online therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep giving to others without leaving yourself behind. I love therapy. I can't wait to go back to my therapist. He keeps me on an even keel. Mm. I mean, it's just the best. I went as a child. I went in my 20s. I'm back now, and I'm staying for life because it just helps you. You know, you get a oh. refresh. It's like cleaning out the soul. Game changer. Got to do it. BetterHelp is flexible and entirely online, so you can easily fit therapy into your schedule. Have your appointments whenever you feel the most comfortable, whether that's in your office, your couch, or even your bed. To get started, just fill out a quick survey, get matched with your licensed therapist, and switch therapists at any time for free. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Tuesdays. BetterHelp.com slash Tuesdays. Get what else, it. Mark? What else? I'll tell you what else. Manscaped, folks. Father's Day is coming up, and you probably have no idea what to get your old pop. Manscaped has got you covered. Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything Dad needs to get you grooming. The package includes the Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer, Weed Whacker 2.0, Ear and Nose Trimmer, Crop Preserver, Crop Reviver, and Performance Boxer Briefs. The whole package comes in a travel bag, so slap a bow on it and call it a gay. I love Manscaped. I keep one in the bag. I got the hair tri- or the nose trimmer at the house. I got the face trimmer in my suitcase. I'm all trimmer. I'm all over it. I love it. My balls are clean. They're smooth. My shaft, I cut the three inches off of hair, so now I'm three and a half inches hard. And it's a, it's a big help. Feels good. You look good. You smell good. If your dad has already got his grooming routine down, we'll hook him up with Manscaped Boxers 2.0. They're super comfortable, breathable, and supportive. Get 20% off and free shipping with code TUESDAYS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off free shipping and free shipping at manscaped.com and use code TUESDAYS. Make this Father's Day one he won't forget with Manscaped. You came out of those balls, so now clean them up. So, uh, yeah, back to JF. Harris, <laughs> Jazz Fest. Um, so we, we we wake up. We do the the classic, you know, get get a little blotto, mm-hmm. and then we go. All right, we're meeting down here at nine. We're gonna get a jump on it. Right. We're gonna get to New Orleans. We can beat the traffic. All right, the Jazz. Beep beep beep. Housekeeping. It's eleven forty eight. Oh, oh Jesus boy. Christ. You, you fuck the wife, you grab your bag, you go downstairs, and uh, he's texting me, like, I'll be down in 11 minutes, I'm, I'm gay, and then... Wait, who are you meeting? Leonard? Uh, Isaac. Oh, Isaac. He's the feature, so he's going to drive us down. Oh, that's right, I see. So, we pop in the car, we hightail down to New Orleans, not a bad drive, two hours, 11 men, something like that. Okay. Get right down to the Big Apple, Big Easy, sorry. And uh, we check into the Airbnb. Hmm. Now, my parents are furious. They're like, you're staying at Airbnb. You're not going to stay at our house. But they live They live in basically Whitman. Right. And I'm, I want to go to Beantown. I got a similar thing. I'm going in a couple weeks. And I'm like, I got the hotel. I'm going to come by for 10 minutes and yeah. uh, you know, jerk off my old bedroom. That's we it. Got a couple shekels to rub together these days. So why not stay walking distance from the fest I'm going to? Well, you want to be in the city, too. The city is nice. The city is nice. I mean, it's got its problems, but it's nice. Yeah, it's got a lot of problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we got some perks. But yeah, the crime is out of control. But uh, yeah, so we get their Airbnb. Always fun to get into an Airbnb because you're, you're in someone else's home. Blah. And I've shit on b bs in the past. I think Joe just hocked up a jizz ball. <laughs> I was but, like a fucking Ferris Bueller. Yeah, it <laughs> was. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm good. Okay, okay. Ooh, it's a lot of tea, a donut. Uh, sure. By the way, not eating this half a donut is killing me. It's just staring at me. I got half a cookie there. It's ripping a hole in my ass. Yeah, maybe we should both eat our snacks on TV. Ah, that's good, Pod. Try the bread. Eat the bread. I ah, had the bread. I'm okay on bread. Last week, Chuck brought us cookies. We loved them. We devoured them. This week, he comes back with fucking bread like the chooch of the year. Yeah, what are you, Jesus? <laughs> you giving us <laughs> bread? It's a Vermont cheddar this? bread from the same bakery. I yeah. wanted to get you a new thing. Yeah, well, well it's, it's you know me. Works. I love new things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hated the cookie, and now you love it. I like the cookie. It was a gag. <laughs> Look to the cookie. All right. So, uh, fuck it. We get to Jazz Fest. We boop, 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 pop a little mushroom action, a little psychedelic. Now... I go, wait a minute. Oh, I fucked up. We get in New Orleans, and I go, you know what these Airbnbs do? They go, hey, 2 p.m. check-in. 
Mm. They keep pushing the check in back and the check out earlier. Right. You know, they go, hey, you got to be out of there by 7 a.m., but you can't check in till 7 p.m. And you're like, what? But that's how they get you. So two, two, so all that, that hightailing out of New Orleans or out of Lafayette was all for naught because now we're here too early to check in. I hate that. Don't you hate that? Yes. In a hotel, you can give them your bags. But right. in Airbnb, you can't really do that. Exactly. Good yeah. point. So we go to a Parkway Tavern, which some say is the best po' boy in the city. So I'm mm. now I'm driving the bus because I got the lady here, and you're in, you're in your hometown. You want to be a host. Yes. You know, anytime somebody goes, where should we go? You're like... Oh my God! I gotta nail this, right? You know, even though you, you don't really care, you're like, I gotta think of a restaurant. So we go to Parkway Tavern. It's within walking distance. We get a fucking killer po' boy and a big sack of jambalaya. We got the uh, the surf and turf, which is half roast beef with gravy and half fried shrimp. Woo! Ah, you can't beat it. Boy, that wedding was fun. I oh. love, I yearn for the wedding. Hell of a wedding. I'll get remarried. And the bachelor party. Yes, both fun. So we get the po' boy, we wolf that down, we go back, we finally have time now, we get in the Airbnb, we take the shrooms, and we go right to Jazz Fest. Now we got, this is where things get hairy. Mm-hmm. So I want to give a shout out, somebody gave me free tickets, I'll blow them, I'll eat your ass, but I can't say who it is, because he, he got them. Okay. Someone gave them to him, so he gave them to me. Ah, the whole thing. Regift. Thank you, the, the label maker. So we, we head on down to Jazz Fest. And it's just a buzz. Right when you get out of the Uber, it's like the whole city's alive. Like all the people are milling around, going into the entrance. Every restaurant is full. Every bar is full. People are hanging out on the balcony. There's people playing, rocking out on their porch, you know, because it's just music time. I love a festival. There's nothing like a festival. Comedy, music, that's it. But still, I love a festival. Well, there's Crawfish Fest. There's uh, Strawberry Fest. We're all about fest in New Orleans. Yeah. But here's the thing. This is one of the only fests that's in a neighborhood. Right. It's in the neighborhood I grew up in. It's in, like, Mid-City, Treme, El Esplanade Ridge. I grew up on Esplanade Avenue. We're on Esplanade. I got it. My friend Stevie grew up there. This guy was here. I got robbed there. The whole thing. And it's just the whole city comes up, and you're like, wow. Everybody, like, is banging. Like, the city is pumping. People are selling shit, throwing beads off the balcony. And you start walking in, you get closer in, you start bottlenecking into that entrance, and you hear the music in the distance, and you see people coming out. There's water here, cold water, ice cold beer, ice cold. And it, and it, it, plus, we're on shrooms. So right. when you're on shrooms, everything is a thing. So you, you know the water guy's like, water? You're like, whoa, water guy. And he's all crazy looking. There's a kid tap dancing on the side. And you're like, we haven't even gotten in yet. And my senses are, are queefing. Percolating. Thank you, Percocet. So love Percocet. We get into the place, and now we're banged up on shrooms. It's wide eyed and bushy tailed. And the guy goes, tickets. And I go, ah, oh, I wasn't ready. Oh, God. So now I'm looking in. I have to download an app, and it, oh. I'm, I'm panicking. And who knows if these will work, by the way? It's, it's all apps. It's all apps. I hate the apps. I can't stand it. Yeah. So. I go up, and I go, oh, and he goes, boop, boop, you're good. Go on in. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm in. And I haven't been here since I was a kid. It's all bringing me back, and I'm on drugs. So we go right to the daiquiri. We get two margarita daiquiris. Uh, and then it's blazing hot. Sun's out. Now, Ludacris is playing hmm. in one tent, and John Baptiste is in another one. Okay. You know him? Not really. He's the he was the band leader on Colbert, sexy black guy, he plays like eight instruments. Okay. So she's like, Well, I want to see Ludacris. He's the famous guy. And I go, Yeah, yeah, Ludacris. All right. This other guy though is is a sleeper. He's a killer and he's from here. Okay. And she's like, Well, I've never heard of him. And I'm like, I get it. So we go see Ludacris. I don't like to shit on the artist, but Stinkfest! Who's who's ludicrous again? What's his hit? Oh, bitch, get out the way. Get out the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I got hoes in different <laughs> area. It's like nursery rhymes He's for, in, for oh, ghetto hose people. In different area codes is funny, at least. Yeah, they're fun. They're oh, fun. It's a good rule. And he's in Fast and Furious. Good rule. Oh, he's in Fast and Furious. This, well, that's this probably, legitimizes him as an artist. Well, I was going to say, I think that's why he's still part of like pop culture. Yeah, he hasn't yeah. had a hit in a long time. Well, oh, his songs good. are like, he would be like, I got hoes, and I'd go, ah, and the whole crowd's going ape shit. But he phoned it in. He mm. phoned it in hard. And when you're when someone phones it in in your town, you get pissed. Yeah. I took it personally. Yeah. Yes. Course. So he's like, 
All right, how are we how are we doing out here in the five one four? Five oh four. You know, first oh, of all, he gets geez. the area code wrong, which is the whole song is the area code. Yeah. So he got the area code wrong. And goes, ah, we're a little tired. We just flew in. You know, we opened it for, up for Janet Jackson. And Brian's like, okay. And then he's like, hey, we're gonna fly out right after this to go to Nashville. We got a big gig in Nashville. And it's like, so you're just admitting this is a pit stop. It's a paycheck. You're gonna knock out. Uh, this New Orleans bullshit, and then go to a real town. I don't know. I took the whole thing personally, and I'm on shrooms. I was furious. Yeah, that's ludicrous. Thank you. <laughs> Move, bitch. Yeah. So I tell the lady, hey, bitch, get out the way. We're going to John Baptiste. Okay. So she's like, all right, we'll go see this guy. I'd never heard of him. Now, this is what you want to see. Mm-hmm. This couldn't have been more of a 180. He's in his high school uniform. Because he went to uh, high school in New Orleans. He's got his high school marching band. Wow. He's got a full gospel choir. And he's got seven dancing hot ladies. I love a dancing a, hot lady. And a couple of gay guys in full body paint dancing crazy. And he comes out and just goes nuts. He starts playing the piano. That kills. Then he gets on the, the boop, boop, boop trombone. That kills. Then he has this weird piano flute thing. Oh. You know those things? And it was transcendent. I mean, transcendent. The whole place is rocking. It's breathing. It's doing this shit. I don't know one song. I've never heard any of his music. We're both in tears. We're both hooting and hollering. I'm jumping up to this thing. The whole crowd's jumping and rocking and rolling. It was incredible. It was a. It was a. It was moving. Take that, ludicrous. You could have moved. Yeah, no move. No move. You should have moved out. Yeah. Good luck moving up. Yeah. we're moving out. You got that right. To the east side. Hack, 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 hack. <laughs> You're a hack, 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 hack. Yeah. How do you like that? Uh-huh. That, that. Suck on that, Luda. Baptiste. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll give Baptiste a Check sniff. out Baptiste. I mean, he's a bit of an activist and a bit of a, oh, okay. a little preachy and all that. But uh, They all got to do that. But uh, she was like, this is the Colbert guy? I'm like, well, he quit because he wanted to spread his wings. He's, he's like hanging out with Oprah and doing shows on uh, you know Taj Mahal. Well, also, by the way, if you're the band leader on Late Night, you're unbelievable. I told True. you when I was in Norway, I went and saw Kevin Eubanks. I just know him as the guy that chuckles at Leno's shit. Right, right. He's like the best guitar player in the world. <laughs> He's unbelievable, and then of course Max Weinberg is my favorite drummer all time. There Number you go. one favorite Jew over over Larry David. This guy. All right, That's, easy. Well, I'm kidding, but, uh, but then don't forget the Roots over here. And the Roots, ass. I'm sure they've done something good. I'm they're not that pretty. Familiar. They're pretty good. These Roots. What Grass was their roots. hit? Did they have a hit? They had a couple of hits. I think one of them hit his wife. I don't know, but uh, confuse them and Government Mule. They're like they feel like they came out around the same time. Boy, those aren't those. Those are white guys. Yeah, well, not the look. I don't look. Uh, well, first of all, I haven't looked at like an album since high school. No. Now it's all streaming. Is right. it Government Mule, isn't it, them? I don't know about the Mule. Who's, what does the Roots sing? I don't know anything about politics. What so. does Mule sing? Uh, I don't know the Roots rah! or Mule. I don't know what <laughs> the sound a Mule makes, but uh, yeah, I don't like a Mule. I don't need a Mule. My ex was a drug Mule, but... The roots are good and bad teas killed. I can't describe the feeling. I, I took some video. I was that guy because it was so moving, but I, I kept it under like 15 seconds. Yeah, you got to uh, get it and get it out. Get in, get out like sex. And uh, it was just incredible. And then at the end, the whole place is sweating. The whole band is like rocking out and they're all like, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're breathing great. The crowd's going nuts. And then he goes, beep, 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 beep. Ah. He starts playing when the Saints go marching in, and he starts walking into the crowd. Oh, now fun. The Classic. Part, and the whole band is with him. So he's got this snake trail of band and dancers and uh, gospel people. Oh, and then they start walking to the crowd, and everybody moves out of the way, and they're playing Let's Go, the Saints go marching in, and they walk right out of the fucking fest and do a full on, uh, what do you call that? The Pied Piper. Classic move. I love it. I love the parting. I love a snake. I did one in the toilet earlier. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. Good game on the phone, snake. Now, this is daytime. This is early in the fest. This is, well, I'd say it's about 5 o'clock, 6 oh, okay. o'clock. But he was definitely a closer. And man, oh, man. It, it was like a, it was inspiring. Wow. As an artist, you're like, I could be that guy, or I could be this guy. Right. And it was very uh, illuminating. Like, mm. hey, hey, wife. You wanted to go see the famous guy. I get it. Everybody wants to see the famous guy. 
But that doesn't mean he's the best. No, it this doesn't. guy is an artist. This guy killed it, and this guy brought it, and he planned it out. You could tell he's like, "I'm gonna wear the high school uniform. I get the band. I get a gospel choir." And he had like a four year old up there dancing at one point. It was his nephew, and he picked him up and moved him out of the way. The place went nuts. I mean, the whole thing was so well orchestrated and so perfectly produced, and uh, and uh, what's the word? Executed. Executed. Now wow. I gotta go see Batiste. Nailed it. Go see Batiste. I gotta shove some Batiste in my ass. You know when a show is so good that you have to Google him? You're like, let me learn more oh, about yeah. this guy. That's what was one of those. Well, I always say this live music is any live that I've ever seen in my life, in the middle of the three songs in, I'm like, I'm getting all their albums tonight. This is unbelievable. It's the yes. same with comedy. You gotta go and feel yes. the vibes and be part of it to really feel it. Exactly. That's what's so great when you go uh when you do a comedy set on the road, and they go, I brought two friends. And then the friends now like you. Mm -hmm. And now you're spreading like herpes. You got to spread it, baby. Spread the legs, spread the wings. Spread that butter. So, yeah. Uh, then uh, after, we were just so moved that we went home, and we, we met up with some old high school friends, and my buddy Ron Richard, Bub's, Bub's Nola, check out his burgers. He, uh, he brought burgers to the wedding. Remember at the end of the wedding, there was a bunch of big pan of burgers? That was him. I don't remember that. Uh, well, if you think if you were hammered, people ate those. They scooped them up and it like kept people going. But scoop the burgers. <laughs> he scooped the burg, and uh, so met up with Ron. Now we had an awkward moment in the bar. Uh oh. So meeting up with Ron, we're pretty half in the bag. We're banged up, and Ron's got a foot fetish. Ooh. I wouldn't say a fetish, but he's a foot guy. Okay. You know he's not. He's not on OnlyFans losing his bank account to the to the hoof, but right. he'll gander at a little little toe. Likes a toe, likes a foot. Another wrong with a toe, another wrong with a foot, another wrong with a knuckle. Sure, yeah. Okay, so we start chatting. I'm like, what is it with the foot? I I'm jealous because I don't care about the foot. The foot is nothing to me. I wish I had a foot fetish because there's feet everywhere. But you can recognize the difference between a good foot and a bad foot, certainly. I suppose I could no. swivel. Come but on. I mean, look, there's some slave feet out there that have been through a meat grinder, and then there's a, a nice lady foot. A dolled up foot. The sure. toes are in the right order. You got a painted situation. Because some have knuckles. Some, the, the toe takes a right turn. That's true. There's like angles and sharp and yeah. hairs and bones. There's the dumb and dumber feet. They're yeah, with yeah. The, yeah. With the Sander, Sander saw or whatever the hell. Yeah. Hilary Sanders. And uh, so we see two cute cute little dames at the bar and they're both wearing flip-flops and i go okay teach me and <laughs> so he's like all right he pulls out a chalkboard and a, and a marker and a, and a pointer and he's doing a full goodwill hunting thing over here and i'm like i don't get it he's like that's a good foot that's not great i would suck on that toe all day and this woman walks over and goes bad foot huh Oh, they she heard. heard. She oh heard everything. God. Amber heard. Wow. Heard a buffalo. And we go, well, I don't know anything about feet. I, I went ignorant. I was like, I don't know anything about feet. He's the foot guy over here. Oh, and my God. He's like, no, it's a good foot. I, I'd eat your ass. That's a great foot. I'm sorry. Whatever. And it was, it was a fun moment. But uh, the other girl was very appreciative that she had the nice foot. Right. Yeah, so the one girl, she kind of started caving. She was like, I walk through Ireland, I hike a lot. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. So she, she was had a caveat for everything. Wow, good foot, bad foot. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The, the shoe was on the other foot. Um, yeah. Then a couple other crazy things happened, but I don't want to hog it. At one point, we got to an Uber, and the guy was a firefighter. And I go, hey, a firefighter, huh? Well, what's going on with Uber? He's like, I just do it for side money, but I've seen some crazy shit in this town. The guy before us had a bullet wound, hmm. and he bled in the car. Oh, like a current bullet wound? He had a current bullet wound, got an Uber, and he did not go to the hospital. Oh, wow. So the driver's like, so you know he did it, you know. Holy shit. So, yeah, New Orleans is a wild, wild town. Yeah, it sure is. I like it during the day Yeah, in certain neighborhoods. And I'm then running. I'll, I agreed. You, you could, it's like Chris Rock show. You can go this gate to this gate. You get yeah. this gate to this gate. Before you know it, you're hopping in a circle. But uh, last day we saw Dead & Co., The Lumineers, and John Hyatt. Oh, fun. Hyatt rips. Well, Hyatt's great. I love Hyatt. La Hyam. Yeah, I'm more of a Sheridan guy. But Hyatt killed it, and uh, the Lumineers were good, too. But again, it was soft and gay right. and mellowy. And then you go to Hyatt, and he's 
He's jamming it. I want to jam. Yeah, you got to jam. Yeah, well, soft music is tough in a live setting. You have to be in a theater where you're kind of sitting in a, a seat or like uh, grass and everyone's just yes. laying around. You're kind of chatting, whatever. I saw the Lumineers at the Asbury Park Fest. It was fine, you know. They're okay, good. Hey ho, or whatever. Is that yes, them? Yes, yes. Hey ho. That's yeah. What I say to my wife. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's something. But yeah, I love a Hyatt. I love his daughter Lily, who I oh, saw on New Year's Eve a few years I don't ago. Know she Lily. kicks ass. Yeah, she's fantastic. I think she, she's friends with Gail Bennington too. She, she looks like a Lily. She really looks like a Lily. Okay, I'll check out Lily. But Hyatt ripped it. Cry love. Um, um, yeah, so that was fun. And again, he's the artist. You, know, you got the little video, but I want to see the art. I want to see the guy who loves what he does. He's banging it out. He's happy to be there, and he brings the heat. I love that. And um, yeah, you got you to gotta love a good festival. I love oh. just going from timing it out. This guy's play here at this hour. We'll get to eat. We'll get our food. We'll get yes. our spot over there. It's a great feeling. Uh, but here's the weird thing. It rained all day Saturday. Mm. So we're sitting in the Airbnb, and you bang, and then you go... What should we do? Should we go out there? And you're like, well, you start thinking about the mud, the rain, just the wet, the cold. And you're like, eh, maybe we'll wait till it, we'll give it another minute. And then you check the the weather app, and it's like 100%, 100%, 100%. And I had this moment of like, fuck it, let's just go. And yeah, you like, got to go. Well, we don't have umbrellas. And I'm like, we'll get them. They'll yeah. have them around. You get a slicker. We got a slicker, we got an umbrella, and we went, and it was, it was commotion. I mean, it was mud, stampede, everybody's... Pushing each other out of the way, the rain is coming down, and it's it's a it's a bad vibe. Rain can really fuck you. It fucked us, Jerry. But I'll tell you, we just sucked it up. We got umbrella hats, and uh, we just got some food. Sat under a, a, a tent, ate the ate the gumbo, and just said, "All right, we're going to watch this band. We're just going to stand in the rain and just suck it up." Well, you can't get wetter than wet. So once you're wet, that's it. You just embrace the wet. Yes. Wish my wife would do that. But uh, so we just went to the Lumineers, and the I'll tell you, the sun parted or the clouds parted, and the sun came out, and it felt religious. Oh yeah, it's a spiritual thing. It, it live is. music, outdoor live music, it can really get you right in the asshole. Yeah, you forget how it is, because and you go, boy, comedy. I don't know if it can do this. Well, comedy is different because it's involuntary. Uh -huh. you know, as is music, you start moving, right, moving and right. grooving. But a good comedy show, and I, I, I talked, I, I saw Brian Regan. I've told it many times in like yeah. 2005, 2006 at the Comedy uh, Connection in Boston, and uh, seeing the pure joy on the faces of everyone around, everyone dying. True. Of course, it can. Yeah, it doesn't move mountains for me. Like I'm not laughing at comedy and thinking about the entirety of my life yes, and the spirituality of yes. life but it's a different thing it's it's quite joyful but the sound of like 10 15,000 people singing uh, in unison is is better than comedy of yeah course. yeah it, there is a beauty uh, it's like a trance with comedy where you're like the whole audience is listening and they're laughing together and then stop laughing and laugh again it's very hypnotic and uh, it's almost like yeah it's like a, a big mass hypnosis with a crowd right but it doesn't move you like that where you're like my dad my childhood <laughs> you know you don't, right. really, you, don't, you don't really get sad on comedy no but you can get um yeah both both have great things and and many people you leave i just did side splitters shout out to everyone that came out and it was just beautiful my favorite club great ever. great time down there so nice and uh bt fucking rules he Love just does the it the right way and uh like i had Brian. matt wayne down there and uh, boy, we had a great time. We stayed at the condo, which was fun because the condo's okay. So I'm like, let me go live with him because the hotel's 20 minutes really? away. And uh, plus, you get the extra cash for the hotel. Oh, I so didn't know that. We were just roommates. I mean, it was nice. The condo's good enough. There's a little back porch. I was smoking cigars, and he was watching Seinfeld and Cable Guy. So I'd poke my head in. And oh, laugh and fun. Come in. I'm smoking bats, and we're laughing. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. How many bats you putting down this week? Well, one a day. Batting down the hatches. Yeah, blood pressure, one a cholesterol. Day. I'm going to die. Well, it's only three days. Oh, I thought you meant every day. Okay. No, for three days. And then you're back and you're back back in business. But uh, I love that weather down there. It's warm. Yeah. You cruise around. I was going for runs. And all the people that came out, I got to give a high five to. But some of those shows, man, you got a show rocking. Yeah. And you can really, you start laughing at how hard yes, they're laughing. Yes. That's a special thing, That is too. special. Very nice. When it's really catches fire. And I had a guy doing clips. Mitch, shout out to him. Hey, He's Mitchie. great. Next time you're down there, you got to use this fellow. Yeah, heavy with Mitch. Um, but uh, great 
Great That's weekend. Right. So many Tuesdays. And it's so fun because in Tampa, I've been going there for so long. I first went there in 2006. Woo! Yeah. BT looked up an email. He's like, the last time we emailed, because we just text now, he's like, was in 2009. He emailed me and said, you got to choose between John again and DePaulo because they both oh. want you and they're three weeks apart. Wow. Isn't that crazy? How the pebble has left the station. Yeah, Pebble Beach. So... Um, <laughs> That was fun, and uh, sold shirts. We sold all of them, and uh, just a great, great time. Love it. But uh, I'll just tell this real quick. So I'm, I'm coming home. I land. I get a text from Sarah. That Sunday? Goes, Sunday. We had the early flight. 7 a.m. Gets back at 10. Got the whole day ahead of you. You got the whole day, but you're on night. It's that, well, that wake up where the alarm goes off at 4, and you're like this. <gasps> Oh, the 4 a.m. Uh, it's a hell, hell gig. And uh, so we go there. Anyways, I land, and Sarah's like, boy, I've had a morning. Steve and Caitlin, my neighbors, Caitlin Palufo, Steve Rogers, great comics, they're, the cat burrowed out, which what kind of pet is trying to escape? <laughs> it like clawed its way through the screen and left, oh, flew the coop. Oh, come on. It's like sex trafficking. They want out. Well, some kooky cat lady, New Yorker, found the cat, brings the cat back, buzzes all the buzzers until someone answers. Sarah answers. Uh-oh. Sarah has to come out, let... Let her into Steve and Caitlin's apartment because she knows where the key is. Now this lady's seen where the key is. Oh, good. Now the lady lingers. She's just talking. She went and taped up their screen. She's inside their house taping wow. the screen shut. Who is this bro? Yeah, she's some kooky cat lady. And so Sarah's like, I've been through the ringer telling me the story. Then I land. I get out of the lift. And I, I've already had this info that this happened earlier. I get out, and there's a fat cat lady with big, long nails this long. Leaning on our like our trash porch, <laughs> and she's like, "Ouja boja, I see you in there." Whoa. And then she goes, "Are you Stephen?" And I go, "No, no." And I already know who she is because I've got the text. And so I go, you're no, avoiding. No, I'm not Stephen. She goes, "Do you know Susan? I Susan, help me get the cats together." Uh. And I go, "Oh, Sarah." And she goes, "Oh, Sarah, that's right. Well, I'm gonna wait here for Stephen. He has my number now." Oh boy. And I go, "Oh my Christ on Christmas!" So I go in. Sarah's like hiding under the covers. I go, "The cat lady's out there." She's like, "She's crazy." Yeah. Then I leave the house three and a half hours later to go do my business. I walk out, and she's still standing there talking to the cat. And she oh goes, are you Lord. Steven? And I go, no, I'm still Joe, you fucking kook. Whoa, what a baddie broad. So she goes, I saved the cat. She told me twice she saved the cat. She's yeah. open with that. Sure. And then yesterday, I'm hanging out in the house, and it's all close proximity. I hear their buzzer go off, and I just hear, oh, Caitlin Palufa going, oh, hey, how are you? And it's, hi, I just wanted to come oh. see the cat. So the lady, we got a cat kook living in our fucking house you, you now. You can't get rid of it. You got to put a saucer out across the street. Maybe she'll lick that one. We got to move or shoot her or whatever, but she probably has eight more lives, this fat asshole. She's Schrodinger's cunt. <laughs> so um, take out the part where I said fat asshole, just in case she Googles. She nah, won't find she this. Won't. No, what are you kidding? She's blowing a uh, tabby right now. <laughs> I don't think cats can do it. Oh, yeah, you're a cat lady. That's right. Well, maybe I'll send her to your place. No! But uh, anyways, we got to wrap up. Um. Do, you, do you ever, uh, let me, the side note uh, of the cat thing, but then we'll get out of here. You're at Tide Splitters. You got BT. You're hanging out. You're, you're making friends. You're talking. You're doing shows. I don't know about do, making friends, but yeah. <laughs> well, you're chatting with BT. It's good to see him. Yeah. Do you ever feel weird that you're like, oh, I'm just a weekend to you? Like, I, I come down here. I love it here. I get the sun, the crowds, the Florida. It's great. And then you just leave. Do you ever have the, Do you ever feel a little wined and dined? I don't know. I mean, they could feel the same way. I guess. They go, hey, you're off to some other club now. All right. But I think it's nice. It's because it's a relationship through the years, and you hang out for three days out of the year. Okay, okay. That's all I needed. But yeah, I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's sweet, and you maintain these relationships. Some relationships, you don't have to be so present you can feel them and you go see them you come True. back around okay okay it could die i guess yeah just sometimes i'm like am i the the town whore you know you go down and they're like oh we love you you're great to see you and then you leave and they're like all right who's next and then they do it to that guy oh maybe but i don't know i feel a connection there because i've been there for so long and then when i first came there he had just started working there we started wow, there at the same time that's why he worked under bobby now he owns the place now i'm selling some tickets so we've grown together and uh, I think it's uh, I think it's nice. I think it's okay. beautiful. But some clubs, yeah, you go and you don't give a shit, and you go, oh, hey, right, how are you? Right, right, right. All right, just, but, just um, checking. Great, great club, and that's one of those clubs people should visit. Side Splitters in Tampa, oh, great yeah. independent club, and just great. That sounds like a little skid, like a bike when you're like. <laughs>
Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, great, great independent club, run the right way, and hot crowds. I love hot. those Tampa crowds. Hot crowds. Got some great clips there. No one has done a. Have people done specials there? Because they should. I thought about it. my half hour. I submitted from there. Whoa. So that was something. Oh, so that but worked. Every time I'm on stage there, I'm like, I should shoot here. This is insane. You should be shooting. I have there. the best sets of my life there. Oh yeah. They love you down an old tampon. But anyways, uh next weekend, Spoke or is it next weekend? The weekend after next, Spokane, June first through the third. Jeremy Spokane. Uh Jeremy Spokane. Come to that. First through the third, and then June seventh. I'm in Hollywood, Hollywood Improv. I'm setting up some podcasts. Everyone always wants me to do the Holy podcast. I'm trying to do the podcast. Finally, doing a couple. I don't know. We'll see if they get back to me. But I ah. um, think I'm doing a couple of those. June seventh, Hollywood Improv. Come to that. June sixteen and seventeen, Columbus Funny Bone. Bunch more dates on comedian Joe List. Go to the YouTube and subscribe. Bunch of videos on there. Specials coming soon. Make sure you get on that and join the Patreon. Oh, you're Our missing Patreon's out. insane. We, we just did Chris Rock's uh, Bigger Blacker, and we got questions. We got Q and Anal. We got um, Musqueef TVs. We got uh, the so comedian commentary. Comedian commentary comedian. was a blast. It gets a little dice here on there too. I'll tell you that. Yeah, we let the expletives fly. Yeah, so get in there. I got to finish this donut while you're doing your plugs. Uh, this comes out when this comes out. I will be May twenty third. The Mothership tonight. Doing that in Austin. We'll oh, be at the Mothership the next day and the Mothership uh, on the 25th. So I think Burt Kreischer is going to be down there, too. So we're going to we're gonna party it up. We're going to be at the Mothership. We're going to be potting. We're going to be protecting our parking. And uh, I'm in Australia right after that. So we're adding shows. Sydney, Perth, Adelaide, New Zealand, Melbourne, and Brisbane. Got them all. And Maybe. then we're announcing a big tour after that. So... Special comes out in July. Say hello to your neighbor, fuck your dad, and eat out Chuck. Yeah, we, uh, on Fun Bearable, my podcast, we just had Doug Key on for like two <laughs> episodes to promote the Rogue Island Comedy Festival. Future Rhode father. Island. That's right. Oh, does it, everyone know? Well, it's out now. Is it? Ah, I think it's out there. All right. Uh, but uh, there's that. And then uh, we're going to do a Fun Bearable live episode at Grove 34 in nice. Queens. And uh, Andrew Sh- Andrew Chavone's going to be on it. Whoa. Matt Wayne's going to be on Whoa. it. It's going to be a good time. Hell yeah. That's, that's going to be show. on uh, June 12th. Monday, June 12th will be there. But check out funbearablepod.com for all that stuff. There you go, folks. You heard it here first. We're here. We're queer. We love you. Praise Allah. Get on the Patreon. Go to the Patreon.